Today I'm going to be reviewing the Stonehenge Hot Pressed 140 pound watercolor paper. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kelly, I make art videos, I do product reviews, tutorials, and tips for creative moms. And in today's video, we are going to be reviewing the Stonehenge Aqua Hot Press 140 pound watercolor paper. Now, I used to use Fabriano Artistico 140 pound hot press watercolor paper. And this was my go-to paper and it was recommended by Lisa Clow from La Cree Fine Art. I will leave a link to her channel in the video description below. And this paper was absolutely amazing. I absolutely loved it, but something happened to where they started um, printing the paper differently and now it doesn't work the way that it used to. So obviously I'm gonna want a replacement paper for, for this because I use it almost in every project. So I figured I would give the Stonehenge Aqua Hot Press watercolor paper a try. So this paper, <laughs> all right, well, as you can tell, this is really, really ridiculous as to how to read right now. So you have to like hit it at, at the right angle to read what it says. So it says smooth and silky water permeates this paper slowly, allowing time for fine details and subtle color gradations, pigment, tint, bright and radiant. An innovative custom made paper to fulfill the needs of watercolor artists. This is Stonehenge Aqua Hot Press. Okay, minus points for this. I don't I don't know why you guys made this basically impossible to read. Um, and I'm, I'm I have 2020 vision, so um, that's a little ridiculous, but all the important information is down here, so we're not going to penalize them too much for that. I tested this paper on a bunch of mediums. I did watercolor, gouache, graphite, charcoal, carbon pencil, ink, ink wash, and marker. Now I did purchase this paper with my own money. It is not sponsored by anyone or anything or anything like that. And this video is completely my own opinion, my personal preference, and it's based on the techniques that I use. So if you don't work the way that I do, you might have a different feel for this paper. So if you like videos like this, reviewing products and doing tutorials, make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell icon as well. So you get notified of all my future uploads. Now let's jump into this review. All right, so let's go ahead and start with graphite. I am using the, what am I using? Faber-Castell uh, 9000 graphite set. I did a review on that. I will have a card pop up and you can check that out. Um, there's not much to report as far as graphite goes. I haven't really met a paper that graphite didn't like. Um, so this was pretty typical. Um, I chose the 3B, the 5B, and the 8B, and I'm just doing some simple blending and laying it down and seeing how that all takes to the paper. There's really nothing dramatic to report. It behaves like graphite normally would on any other kind of paper. It was also good for drawing with graphite. I had no problems with that as well. It was all very normal erased relatively easy. And now moving on to colored pencil. I did really, really like this paper for colored pencil. It worked really well with my techniques and I prefer to layer and use solvent. And this paper did exactly what I wanted it to do with colored pencil. So there's not really a whole much to report. Um, I really liked this project and I came it came out exactly the way I wanted it to and I have a longer video if you would like to see this whole project I will put that in a card and you can check that out as well. Um, but yes this paper takes layers with colored pencil fabulously and it also takes the solvent fabulously. It dries relatively quickly and you're able to move on. Um, there were a couple spots where I did feel like it wouldn't take any more layers, but I was burnishing quite a bit. So um, it behaves as I would expect uh, a colored pencil paper to behave. 
So I was relatively pleased with how it handled colored paper. Or not colored paper, colored pencil. <laughs> And next I decided to give charcoal a try and I am using the General's charcoal pencils and I will also be doing the carbon pencils and um, charcoal I really mm, it, it kind of felt funny on this this paper but it was just the General's um, when I used the Derwent tinted charcoal, I actually really liked the results that I got. So I guess it really kind of depends on how you how you work with charcoal. I'm not really, I haven't used charcoal a whole lot. Um, I did do a project with the tinted charcoal, so I was more familiar with that. They do feel a little bit differently. It doesn't feel like exact charcoal. So um, I mean like it does, but it doesn't. It feels like it works a little bit different. So I am... I am more uh, familiar with the tinted charcoal and the, the different brands. The difference between the brands was actually um, the Derwent and the Generals. So I did, I did tend to like the Derwent tinted charcoal better on this paper than I did the others. So I will say that I most definitely liked the way that the carbon pencil came out with this and I can see myself using um, the graphite and the carbon pencil together and I think that would make a really nice project so I did really really like it for the carbon pencil. So the next thing I tried was some of the ink pens that I had. I had a Micron and I don't know if it was dead or not but it did not perform well on this paper. I was having a, a tough time with it and I have a couple of them so I was really kind of unimpressed with how this pen worked on this paper. Um, my Pentel pen worked relatively good but that basically works really great on anything. Um, there's really not a whole much to report as far as ink pens go. I mean it's basically as similar as graphite it ex you would expect it to perform on any paper the same. Um, and some of my, my markers, even though they were barely used, uh, they felt like they were dead on this paper. I don't know if it was the paper or, I mean, I lay them flat, so I can't imagine them running out of ink because they're very rarely used. So um, that was a weird, a weird thing in general, but that was just, you know, I'm just going to give the paper a pass on that one because I don't know if it was my pens or the paper thing I tried was a watercolor piece and I am going to say right off the bat that I do think the masking fluid caused a lot of the buckling and when I did peel it off it wasn't um it doesn't seem to like masking fluid too much so um it did tear a little bit and to be honest I don't think this paper really likes any kind of tape um to be fair I think you're supposed to work out of it on the block but I don't work like that I like to have my stuff taped and set upward so I can see what I'm doing and in the filming process it just I have to work upright for most of it um, so I I'm not sure if that was any account for the buckling but um, it buckled quite a bit and as you can see it's like almost like a dome at this point right here and then like all the paints kind of flowing over to the side so I I just I was really disappointed, especially if this is an aqua paper. I don't know guys, I just really was not impressed with this at all as far as watercolor goes. It was also really hard um, to work in layers on this paper. I found that parts of it were peeling and it, it was just really easy to kind of overwork the, paler, the paper and get the peeling effect like it just it kept peeling up and it was a very frustrating paper to work on as far as wet media goes um but i do think in part of that was um attributed to the masking fluid so i definitely don't recommend using masking fluid with this paper if you are trying to do a watercolor piece this paper also did not take its shape back when I used the hair dryer on it like most of the papers that I used so I definitely will not be using this paper in the future with uh, watercolor or any type of wet media. All right so the next thing I tried was uh, marker and for this I am using the Windsor and Newton Pro markers and I did do a first impressions video on these markers. I will have a card pop up here and you can check that out. 
Surprisingly enough, I did like this paper for markers. There was very minimal feathering and ink spreading and only minimal bleed through through the back. Um, so next I started working um, in gouache and I started to do the wet on dry method and I did not like the results for this as well. I mean, it wasn't nearly as bad as working with watercolor, but it was very hard to work wet on wet, uh, or sorry, wet on dry with this paper. Um, it was a little bit better with the wet on wet, and I found that the gouache worked better on this paper when there was more water added to it. It was, um, it, it's kind of like up in the air as far as that goes. So I'm just gonna suggest that it, the gouache, as far as that goes, it's basically based on the technique that you use. Um, so the next thing I did try was the ink wash, and I am using the Winsor & Newton um, black ink for that. And I actually really liked the ink wash on this paper, which was surprising. It did buckle while I was working on it, but because I only did one or two layers, this section did dry back and take its shape. So I'm assuming if you work in a few layers, you won't have a problem with this paper. Um, so this is the buckling of my first piece, and that was actually pushed in between books for a while. So I am now going to attempt to flatten this out, and I'm going to wet the back of this. I have the front of it, um, what's behind there, uh, glassine. And then I'm wetting the back and I'm putting it face down. And then I'm going to proceed to add a cooking tray and a bunch of books. And I'm going to let this sit for 24 hours or so to see if I can get it to take its shape back. So after letting this paper sit under these books for a while, uh, I think it was about 24 hours I gave it, and then I decided to undo this all and see if this came out correctly. I was able to get this paper to take its shape back. Um, the background noise, guys. There's a lot of people outside cutting their grass, and it was too loud in my house to do this voiceover. But I was able to get it to take its shape back, so if this kind of extra step in your watercolor pieces doesn't bother you at all, this paper might be okay for you, uh, depending on how many layers you use, and if you don't mind the paper peeling while you're working on it. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to test with this paper is what bled through and what didn't, and if it handled the tape okay as well. I used the artist tape in the center and regular masking tape on the sides. Um, this paper doesn't really like the masking tape, but it didn't really mess up the internal section. So if you pull it away from your piece at the end, you shouldn't have any problem with it. Um, unfortunately, uh, the artist tape in the center, not that you would be taping the center of your pieces, but if you were to section off and try to like make like bookmarks or something, you might have a problem with this paper. It ended up tearing quite a bit in the center when I pulled off this last piece and right here, and it was just a disaster and I was not happy at all with that. Like that tape is very low tack. It shouldn't have had that much effect on it and it was not on for a very long period of time. So um, that's the marker bleed through and nothing else bled through. So um, I think it's okay for marker. I think I'm going to use it as a base for a colored pencil in the future. Okay, so that was basically my first impressions on this paper. I gave it a pretty fair go. I think I did two complete projects with it and I, tested it with a whole bunch of mediums. Um, to sum it up, is this a good paper? Yes. Will I buy it again? Most likely not. Um, I have heard a lot of good things about the Arches hot press watercolor paper, and I've already tried the 300 pound Arches cold press watercolor paper, and I am absolutely in love with that one. So I have a feeling that Arches is going to be my go-to paper. Um, this is not a bad paper. I just don't see myself buying it again. So let's go over the price really quick. 
and we will compare the arches, the Fabriano, and the Stonehenge, and you can make up your own mind. Okay, so I did some quick math, <laughs> and I'm going to compare price-wise all three of the papers. So the arches is $39.99 for 20 sheets on Amazon right now, so that equals $1.84 per sheet. The Fabriano Artistico is $26.58 for 20 sheets, and that brings it in to $1.30. And then the Stonehenge is $23.49 for 15 sheets, bringing it out to $1.56 per sheet. So with that in mind, and because I've used the Fabriano, I don't think Stonehenge is really worth the price, I mean, like I said, it's not a bad paper, but maybe it's just for the techniques that I use. Um, and I like to layer. So if you are a layering person, I don't really see this paper working out for you unless you're using it for something other than watercolor. I really liked it for um, colored pencil. So the rest of my pad will most likely be used for colored pencil, graphite, and those kinds of things. But I don't think I will be using any wet media on this anymore but I was able to flatten it out, but it is hard to work on it when you saturate as much as I do. Um, and it bubbles and it's hard to get the, the pigment where you want it to stay. So I don't think it's really worth the money, um, but that's just my opinion and that's you know based on the techniques that I use. So having said that, the mind of watercolor his channel he reviewed the 140 pound cold press paper and he's a strictly a watercolor artist I don't really see him do a lot of other mediums and he really liked that paper so I'm gonna leave a link to his video review on the cold press linked in the video description below and you guys can decide whether or not you want to give this paper a go I personally don't think I will be buying it again but I do there's a bunch of Stonehenge papers that I do want to try that I've heard were wonderful for colored pencil, like the individual sheets. So I'm going to be trying those. And when I get my Arches Hot Press watercolor paper, I will be doing a review on that as well. And I have the 300 pound cold press paper to do a review along with that. Um, but having said that, I don't think that this Stonehenge paper really held a candle to the old version of the Fabriano Artistico Extra White Hot Press 140 pound watercolor paper. So I, I'm not very impressed with it. Um, so I'm hoping that Arches will not let me down and I will have a go-to paper from now on. So if you've tried this paper and you love this paper, let me know in the comments below why and how you use it because I would love to know. Maybe I just need to try a different technique with this paper. I hope you liked this review and you found it informative and you can actually make an informed decision before you purchase it. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share with friends, and why not hit that subscribe button? Because it's fun and it's free. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.